thought, uh, I'm sure we'll all agree that in whatsoever uh, sphere we live or experience we've had, um, we can answer with conviction that men and women do really question what we are doing in life. Maybe why are we here? What is our purpose? Why were we created? Or some might ask why we evolved. Not that we did. Um, what is our duration? What's our span? What happens after we die? Uh, and there are a number of questions that come from it. I'm not going to uh, try and answer all of those tonight. You'll be glad to hear. But we are going to look at it from God's perspective. What is God's purpose? And that will uh, provide some answers to these questions for us. So firstly, let's uh, d define purpose. Uh, the Oxford Dictionary uh, describes purpose um, as the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So really purpose is the reason or the why. And so this evening we're going to look at the why uh, or the purpose in three main sections. We're going to look at God's purpose with creation and that involves you and I. Why are we here? Why is the earth here? What's our purpose? God's purpose with Israel. Israel as a nation has been throughout history persecuted, belittled and rejected, but it's still here, so why Israel? And finally, God's purpose with the Lord Jesus Christ, a man that many purport to remember at the end of each year, or at least our Gregorian calendar, but really, do people know who they're remembering or why they're remembering him? What was, or who was the Lord Jesus Christ and his purpose? What's our basis for the things we're looking at um, tonight? I said we're looking from God's perspective, so uh, we're looking at the Bible. Um, and so to help us illustrate why uh, we use the Bible, we have a, a verse on the screen behind me. It's taken from the New Testament, I'll read it to you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now we have the word inspiration there. The word uh, inspiration or inspired has changed somewhat over recent years. And Cambridge Dictionary tells us that inspiration is a, a sudden good idea or an example which people admire. But that's not really what the word here actually means. Uh, the word can be better translated uh, divinely breathed in. And so we believe then that this Bible is given to us from God and contains words of God. Yes, the Bible was translated uh, for us into English from the original text, and so it doesn't mean that it's infallible. There will be some mistakes, but it, the onus is on us to, to search these things out and to check uh, the true meaning. But we believe then that the Scripture, as we have it, so the Bible before us, hopefully most of you have got a copy today, and the Old Testament and the New Testament... Um, is given by God. And, and 1 Peter 2 tells us that holy men were caused to write these words when the Spirit of God moved them. And so we'll be using the Bible as our basis for this talk now. So firstly then, we said we're going to look at creation. What is God's purpose with creation? And we're going to split this again into a few headings. Firstly, we're going to look at um, the earth. Why did God create the earth? We're not going to uh, challenge evolution and other things tonight, but this will be done from talks on this platform. But taking that as a, a given, why did God create the earth? And we're going to start um, by looking um, in Isaiah, in Isaiah 45. I'm going to put the passage on the screen for those who might not be sure the way around their Bibles, um, but feel free to turn it up as well. So we're going to start in Isaiah 45 um, and verse 18. And here God says, for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. And there's our key from this passage. God formed it to be inhabited. Now you might think that's maybe obvious. Um, but it's more and more important in the days in which we live when people are worried about the earth being destroyed by flooding, nuclear war, maybe asteroids coming from space. But God has clearly said and promised that he has created the earth to be inhabited. It will always be populated. And so therefore he will not let it be destroyed in its entirety. What else can we find out about God and his creation with the earth? Well, the next passage we're going to look at is from Revelation 4. Um, and verse 11. 
Revelation 4 and verse 11, we read the following words. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for thou hast created all things, by implication including the earth, and for thy pleasure they were, are and were created. And so our second point we can glean then from the New Testament then this time, that the earth was um, created for pleasure of God, to give pleasure for him and for him to enjoy. Okay, we're building a picture here, what else? Well, we also know from Numbers 14 and verse 21 um, that God says here, But as truly as I, God, live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So the earth was to be inhabited and was created for God's pleasure, but it ultimately was created um, for his glory. Okay, we'll park earth, so we're going to build a picture here. Um, what else can we learn from creation? Uh, we're going to look at uh, us now as humans, humankind. Um, what can we learn about God's purpose with you and I? Um, the first passage I'm going to put on the screen then is from Genesis 1, at the beginning of the Bible. Uh, Genesis 1 and verse 26. And speaking of the time of the creation, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God here says it's created man and mankind in his image, and he's let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the various other animals. So the first pur purpose then that we have, that we are here for, is to have dominion over the rest of creation. Uh, dominion, maybe not a word we use so much today, but it means sovereignty or control. Um, but note here, and this is an important distinction, God does not say that he created man to have control over each other. The clear distinction Everything was listed, but didn't include humankind. Adam and Eve, and so you and I today, men and women, were given to have dominion over the lower creations. Okay, let's develop this a bit further. Same in Genesis 1, but now verse 28. And um, we read, And God blessed them, the creation, and God said unto them, Adam and Eve, Be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And had dominion over the fish of the sea, and so on and so on. Again, we see dominion mentioned uh, there again. But this verse... Um, emphasises their requirement to be fruitful. And so God, um, his intention from the beginning, his purpose was never for man to be on his own. He created Eve and it was never the purpose for them to be on their own. And so he instructed them to replenish the earth. We'll notice in passing in verse uh, 13, O you seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. That maybe give you an inkling of where we're going uh, in the next section with Israel. But the part I want us uh, to focus on from that reading uh, is specifically mentioned in 28 and 29, but as a whole encompasses this theme. And we read in uh, those verses there, Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And so here we have explicitly uh, instructed and talked about giving glory to God. And you remember that when we looked at the earth and creation in the, in the section before, that part of the purpose of creation was to give glory to God. And so God has given that instruction to us. And we can take this theme of glory a, a little further. And we won't go to all of these, but... Some examples of passages which speak of, of giving uh, glory to God. We have uh, Numbers uh, 14, the earth should be filled with God's glory. We have the passage we had here, Habakkuk 2, the earth should be full of God's knowledge and glory. Uh, and Isaiah 11 echoes it. And there are many other passages. passages. So a summary so far then, and looking at uh, creation and us as mankind. Uh, we've seen that the earth and mankind were created to give pleasure uh, to God. And ultimately the mankind was the jewel of God's creation. And their role was to look after uh, creation and to populate the earth. 
So what about Israel then? We mentioned it there in, in 1 Chronicles 16. Um, Israel as a nation, I'm sure you'll hear about them regularly in the news. You can't get away from it, talking the Middle East and those that are with Israel, those that are against Israel, the wars surrounding Israel and so on and so on. What about Israel as a nation then? Um, this is a picture from Israel, this is um, Masada down by the Dead Sea. The first passage uh, I want us uh, to look at then um, uh, is God uh, speaking of Israel. And I'll read it to you off the slide. The Lord did not set his love upon you, so he's speaking of Israel, nor chose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine, every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. And so again we have this theme of glory. And so Israel were uh, created and chosen by God because he loved them, as you saw in the first passage in Isaiah. And Deuteronomy uh, elaborates on that for us. And because he loved them, it was part of God's plan of showing forth his glory. But what else can we learn? Well, God also says that this people have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. Okay, so again, just like we've seen this theme with creation, with mankind, Israel too were created for God's pleasure and to give praise to him. We read of that also in our Chronicles reading. We still haven't really answered the why though, have we? Why Israel? I'll read you another passage. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, this is speaking of Israel, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation, Israel, is a wise and understanding people. And so Israel were used as a witness. It was an opportunity for the nations around to look at Israel and see that they were different, and to question why were they different. And so therefore, the answer to those questions is to show forth that God was with them because he chose them, because he loved them. Now our third section um, I want to look at is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I say, many um, purport to uh, remember him at various stages in the year, but do we really know who the Lord Jesus Christ um, was? So my laptop's going. So, um, now the Lord Jesus Christ really could be several uh, talks in itself, um, so this is really going to be just a high level overview, but hopefully you'll see that it will tie in the things that we've gone before and we'll draw our thoughts to a, a conclusion. So what was God's purpose with Jesus Christ or the Lord Jesus Christ? Well what's interesting is that many uh, throughout history would deny that this was a real character. Even those that don't believe in the full power of Jesus Christ still admit he was a true character in history. He was someone who existed. He was a real person. And his impact continues to have a, a, a purpose and impact in our lives. Uh, today, even our whole dating system is based around the life um, or birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, AD, BC. But who really was this man and what was the significance of his life and God's purpose with him. We're right back at the beginning in the book of Genesis, um, we read and we know about the story of Adam and Eve. We also know that they were given uh, freedom to do whatever they willed, but they were given one instruction of something that they couldn't do. Unfortunately, they did that thing that they were told they shouldn't do and took of the forbidden fruit. And there they set a precedence in the Garden of Eden that ever since the children of Adam and Eve, mankind, have been separated from God because of the sin of Adam and Eve. But we then read on in Genesis 3 
um, of a, a seed who would come that would reverse that. This hope of a promised seed was known to the Jewish people in the time of the Bible and still now as the Messiah, the Saviour Jesus Christ. And we can read of him in our Bible as the Lord Jesus Christ. And really this was the purpose that God had with the Lord Jesus Christ from the beginning. Because we read in John 1 and verse 1, it's up on the screen in the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now the reference to the word here, logos in the Greek, um, is very significant. It simply means um, a reason, a purpose, or a plan. And so God's purpose, therefore, was centred in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we read later on in a few verses down that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, again glorious theme, as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So part of the Lord Jesus' work then, as this word made flesh, um, can be summarised in a verse on the screen. This is taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Again, reconciliation, maybe not a word we use today, but just means the bringing back together of two parties or more. So Adam and Eve at the beginning did what they were told not to do and created a rift which has separated us from that day um, to today from God. But God had ultimately in his plan, the word made flesh, this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would provide a way for us to return to the favour of God as his supreme creation. And this is expounded further on in Corinthians, where we read, To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And so God through Christ would see that the sins of faithful individuals were not held against them. And the work of the Lord Jesus Christ would provide a way back for us as humankind, as children of Adam and Eve, to be part of God uh, in his ultimate plan. As I said, that is a very high level summary, there's far more to it, but I just wanted to, to give you a snapshot really of what God's purposes was with those key themes which come up through the Bible. And so we've looked at God's purpose with creation, uh, why we are here, why the earth is here. Israel, their importance as part of God's plan. And finally Jesus, how he ties that all together. So a conclusion, despite many different points that we've looked at, um, this can all be summarised in one verse, and this is taken from Numbers 14 and verse 21, where God says, And as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now tonight we won't talk about how we can be a part of that, there will be other talks on this platform. But that's God's ultimate plan with the earth. He wants the earth to be filled with the, his glory, his ultimate and perfect glory. And so the question is, do you want to be a part of it?